This is the International Soccer Preview and we are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to Series 16. This is the short version looking at the groups of the 2023 CONCACAF Gold Cup. This is Group B, Mexico, Haiti, Honduras and Qatar. Here we go. Hello, it's the International Soccer Preview. I'm Kevin and I'm missing my usual uh, co-hosts, but uh, I talked about that in the short version of Group A, so I won't repeat it all here. Uh, this is 16, Series 16 of our media cast. It's the short version of the same Series 16, which looks at the groups and teams for the 2023 CONCACAF Gold Cup. As in this short version here, we're replacing parts one and two of that full length version with a short summary of each team's history and a look at their recent form. And we can now include uh, the three teams uh, that just yesterday qualified through the playoffs. Um, but neither, <laughs> none of them are in this group, so it doesn't matter. Let's continue on and uh, start with a uh, summary of Mexico's history. So uh, Mexico is a middling team at the world level. Hang on, I gotta get the graphics uh, sorted out here. There we go, kind of an overview image. And uh, yes, a middling team at the world level is Mexico. And uh, one of the top two teams, if inconsistently so, in the region. At the world level, the only time they passed the group stage of the World Cup before 1994 was the two times that they hosted. And their consistent round of 16 finishes since 1994 aptly describes their level uh, in world football. It is supported by the results in Confederations Cup and Copa America appearances, which average out to quarterfinal finishes. By these measures, they had a peak in the 1990s with a second place finish in both of those tournaments, as well as three gold cups in a row in their region. And I, I should say those tournaments referring to Copa America and Confederations Cup, not the World Cup. Uh, three gold cups in a row there in the 1990s. Unfortunately, they were not able to bring this to the 1990 World Cup as they were banned. They seem to have prized these competitions above regional ones, sending, for example, their A team to the 2017 Confederations Cup and a B team to the 2017 Gold Cup. That became a concern for CONCACAF who, after 2016, did not allow them to participate in the Copa America as they had consistently done from 1993. Perhaps they were overestimating themselves as needing better competition than the region could provide. However, since 2002, they only qualified as the top team in the region twice. And in 2014, they finished fourth, requiring an intercontinental playoff to reach the cup. In the regional cup too, in five of the 14 editions from 2000, they failed to reach the final. Nevertheless, they are on average the top team in a relatively weak region. In terms of recent form, uh, though they have reached the final uh, less than one might expect from 2000 to 2017, they have done so for the last two Gold Cups, and they remain arguably the dominant team in the region, or at least the co-dominant team along with the USA. But while they reassert their dominance in the region, they lose ground on the world stage, their seven tournament run uh, finishing at the round of 16 in the World Cup, coming to an end with a group stage finish in 2022. Perhaps too much should not be made of that, but finishing second behind Canada in qualification for that tournament and tying Jamaica twice in the 2023 2022-23 CONCACAF Nations League suggests that there is competition in their region beyond just the USA. All right, we move on to Haiti and uh, start with a summary of their history. And Haiti um, is an inconsistent team. Apart from the 1970s, their periods of strength show no pattern and do not track uh, among the major tournaments. So doing well in one does not correlate with doing well around the same time in another. 
For example, their good performances in the Caribbean Cup, the qualifying tournament for the Gold Cup until recently, does not match up with their three quarterfinal finishes in the Gold Cup. It's the same at the game level where in any given game, they can challenge the best or drop points to the worst. Nevertheless, there is an overall pattern to their history. They were present but weak in the 1960s and enjoyed their best period in the 1970s with very competitive results surrounding the success of their only regional title in 1973, which qualified them for their only World Cup appearance in 1974. The low was the 1990s, where they were mostly absent from competition. They seem to be enjoying their second strongest period in recent times. And we move on to look at their recent form. So passing the group stage of the two, uh, sorry, passing the group stage for two gold cups in a row in 2017 and 2019 was the only time they had done that and represents their best period since the 1970s. It included achieving their best gold cup result with a semi-final finish in 2019. However, such is their inconsistency that it was not matched with an improved performance in World Cup qualifying, and they still await their first visit to the final round of qualifying since 1982. Performances in the 2021 Gold Cup and 2022 World Cup do not herald any, uh, any positive uh, signs, but their dominant performance in the 2022-23 CONCACAF Nations League B earned them promotion to League A, and we'll see them among the top tier teams in regional competition at least. Team three is Honduras, and so we give an overview of their history. Uh, Honduras was, uh, had a strong period around 1982, where they reached the World Cup and won the CONCACAF Regional Cup. They were inconsistent in the 90s, doing well in the UNCAF Nations Cups, that's the uh, kind of local tournament for Central American teams, but uh, failed to pass the group stage in the Gold Cups. A second strong period for Honduras was around 2011, with two World Cup qualifications in a row and three Gold Cup semi-final finishes in a row, as well as winning, winning the Copa America, Copa Centro America, that's the new name of the UNCAF Nations Cup, uh, winning that title after a gap of 16 years. However, they have dropped off a little uh, since, which will be covered in the recent performances here. So in terms of their recent performances, they have been up and down in recent times. In 2015, Honduras suffered their first Gold Cup group stage knockout um, since 2003 and they suffered the same fate in 2019. Since three semi-final finishes from 2009 to 2013, the quarterfinals has been their best finish since. After reaching the World Cup in 2014, they fell in an, they fell in an intercontinental playoff to Australia in 2018, and then were very poor in 2022, finishing last of eight in the final group. Nations League 2022-23 was respectable enough, though, losing both to a strong Canada, but winning both over Curacao. And finally, we have the invited guests, uh, Qatar. So prior to 2019, Qatar was a semi, uh, sorry, was a second tier team and had done well to rise to that level. 1990 saw a spike in performance that almost saw them reach the World Cup, but otherwise the bottom half of the final group stage of World Cup qualifying and quarterfinal finishes in the 2000 and 2011 Asian Cup seemed a bit of a ceiling. The 2019 Asian Cup was impressive as they stormed their way to, the, to their first title. In retrospect, though, it seems like they peaked too soon. They prepared with a stunning amount of games and tournaments, including the 2019 Copa America and the 2021 Gold Cup. But though they performed respectively there, they never looked as convincing as they had in the Asian Cup. All of this preparation was for the 2022 World Cup. So we look at that in recent performances. 
The 2022 World Cup proved disappointing as they lost all games and did not perform nearly up to potential. Everything in their recent performance was in preparation for that. So rather than reviewing the recent performance uh, here, considering where they go uh, forward from here is really the primary concern. The players they have developed will likely leave uh, will likely leave them competitive with the top teams in the Asian region, at least for the time being. But one wonders if the motivation and the resources that backed it will be there going forward so as to maintain uh, the position they earned in their preparations for the World Cup. All right, well, that is a short history and a look at the recent form of the teams. So now we're going to switch over to part three of the full-length podcast, uh, for a comparison and discussion about the teams. Um, we're going to begin by looking at the uh, pots uh, that the teams came from. Yeah, so uh, Mexico came in as a, the first-ranked team overall in CONCACAF, so they were um, obviously a pot one team, but ranked first overall. Um, Haiti come into this tournament ranked sixth among CONCACAF teams, so they were second among pot two teams. And then Honduras uh, are ninth ranked, so they um, are a pot three team, but the best of the pot three teams. And then finally, Qatar, um, they were kind of automatically put in pot four as guests, so their their pot ranking wasn't determined by their world ranking. Um, so I guess really what you can say is that Mexico, Haiti, and Honduras all come from the very tops of their pots, Haiti being second. And then you have Qatar, who's essentially misseeded. Um, so it kind of bolsters my, my opening argument that this is the toughest group. Yeah, I was going to say, like, at the very least, they're at the top of pot four. But actually, where would you put uh, Qatar? Uh, we, could, we can look at that in terms of ranking, but just in your own mind, what pot uh, do you think they belong in? I, I think they're a pot two team. I think they're certainly better than Guatemala and probably Jamaica as well. Um, you know, yeah. I think Panama were... You know, they were kind of a poorly performing World Cup team, kind of like Panama have been in the past. And yeah, I think definitely a pot two team. All right. Well, your your persuasive argument uh, uh, grows that much stronger there, <laughs> for sure. Let's take a look at the uh, rankings of each team. And this will, uh, this will actually give us an indication of what pot they should be in too. That's right. Yeah. So Mexico, we said our first overall in CONCACAF. They're ranked 15th. Uh, in the FIFA rankings and 24th in ELO. Uh, interestingly, uh, at 24th in ELO, they're at a 10-year low. Um, oh. They've often been in the teens. Um, FIFA rankings, they've, they've been higher, they've been lower. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in recent years, they've kind of always been in that 10th to 20th uh, range. But I think ELO probably shows their ranking system can show long-term trends a little bit better. Yeah, I mean uh, that was the first time they've been knocked out in the in the uh, group stage of the World Cup for ages, as we saw in the history section. So uh, maybe it's reflecting that. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Haiti, Haiti are 87th in uh, FIFA and 70th in ELO. Um, this represents probably a, a general rise from where they were, say, five years ago when they were um, 100th in the FIFA rankings and as low as 83rd in ELO. Um, but they've also been higher in, in, in the past um, as well. So probably uh, their, their rankings show a, a recent rise. And it's probably being reflected in some of their uh, Gold Cup play and uh, World Cup qualifying play as well. Yeah, I should be mad at Haiti for knocking Canada out at the quarterfinal stage of the 2017 Gold Cup. But uh, I must confess they're one of my favorite teams. I'm not even sure why, but I, I, I'm always pulling for Haiti. Uh, an interesting comparison, though, with uh, Honduras I see here. Yeah, Honduras are higher in the FIFA rankings. They're 80th compared to Haiti's 87th, but they're 15 points lower uh, in the ELO rankings. They're 85th overall. Um, this actually marks a bit of a fall from grace from for Honduras, um, reflected in their World Cup play in 2022, uh, which uh, which we commented on, um, kind of going from a, a top team in the region to kind of falling at or below some of the second tier teams. Um, yeah, recently they've been in the 60s in both systems, even as high as 53rd in ELO. So they've they slipped quite a few places in both systems based on recent performances. Yeah, right. And we'll talk in the discussion section as to 
uh, which one we think will emerge stronger in this tournament. But meanwhile, we have uh, uh, Qatar, and wow, look at the numbers there. Yeah, 61st in FIFA and 69th in ELO. So that would place them um, second, you know, among the, the four teams in this group in terms of rankings, albeit just one ELO spot ahead of Haiti. Um, Qatar uh, were kind of on a steady trajectory rise until kind of just before the World Cup, um, unfortunately for them, um, and have dropped a bit since. They were uh, 48th and 49th in December 2021, have fallen a bit to 61st and 69th. Um, but uh, yeah, as we said, overall, their their pot four team is really not where they should be based on rankings. Yeah. Uh, I see they were 28th in uh, June 2019, so that was after the Asian Cup, and uh, wow, they really deserved it. I, did you watch much of that? I did see the final, but uh, yeah, they were great, and some spectacular goals as well, if I recall. Yeah, I watched the whole thing, and they were just amazing to watch, and I'm really sad they they didn't bring that form to the World Cup. It's almost like they, they peaked too soon, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at the uh, at the head to head here, and we'll begin. Uh, oh, you take us through it, and I'll maybe add details if uh, if need be. Yeah. So Mexico has a winning record against Haiti. In fact, they've never lost in ten meetings. Eight wins and two draws is their record. Uh, yeah, that's right. And their last meeting uh, was in 2019. That was in the Gold Cup semi final, and actually Haiti took Mexico to extra time there. Uh, although Mexico did win in the end. Yeah, good performance from Haiti. Uh -huh. uh, Mexico versus Honduras. Uh, Mexico have the edge over their Central American rivals. Um, 18 wins, 7 draws, and 6 losses. Yeah, well, actually not as, uh, not as convincing as all that, is it? No, um, especially if you divide it up into their, their uh, records post, uh, pre and post-2010. Uh huh. What's that? Um, so uh, Mexico um, had won ten of eighteen uh, games uh, pre twenty ten, but um, since twenty ten, uh, they still have a record of eight, two, and three. But Honduras have beaten them three times um, in a little over the last decade. So they're um, yeah, a bit of a thorn in their side. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, not recently though. Uh, they have met quite a bit uh, in recent times. Uh, one, two, three, six times since 2017. And I'll just say the most recent one uh, in the 2022 World Cup qualifying, uh, Mexico won twice. But as you said, Honduras was quite quite poor there. Uh, 2021 Gold Cup quarterfinal, uh, Mexico convincingly won three, uh, three nothing. So I'm not seeing uh, uh, where... Uh, Honduras are picking up those wins, but it's not in in recent times, at least. Yes, yeah, no, you're you're right about that. Um, or Mexico and Qatar have actually never met, nor have Haiti and Qatar. Um, so some new history will be created. Um, yeah. Honduras have met Haiti, and Honduras has a winning record: six wins, three losses. Yeah, Honduras and Haiti, uh, but not so recent. Um, uh, the last time was in uh, 2015 in the uh, Gold Cup group stage, and actually Honduras, uh, uh, sorry, Haiti won that game, uh, won nothing. Yeah, and then Qatar versus Honduras, they actually have met. That was in the 2021 Gold Cup group stage. Um, <sighs> Qatar won that game 2-0, uh, and that's the only time they've met. Right, that's right. So nothing to add there, uh, but it is interesting that they they have a history uh, there. Uh, all right. Well, the next thing uh, is uh, the odds to win the tournament, and uh, yeah, a bit of a blunt instrument here. We only have uh, the overall odds to win the whole thing. Yeah. Well, Mexico um, quite favored among the four teams in this group. Forty-seven percent chance. Kind of aligns there, basically fifty-fifty with the states. Um, kind of in Gold Cup history. Uh -huh. um, Haiti just given a 1% chance, despite being the pot two team. Honduras have a 4% chance, and uh, the uh, visitors, Qatar, have a 5.5% chance. So, um, yeah, the pot four team with the uh, kind of second best odds, but that's to win the tournament. Yeah, uh, but it does give us a, a view of uh, how the odds makers see the relative strength. And, you know, the summary of that is... Uh, 
Part 2 Haiti uh, by the odds makers at least viewed as the part, part, uh, part 14 by far here. So let's begin our discussion there. Uh, do you agree with that? Um, I don't. I'm, I'm kind of not sure what to make of Honduras. Um, you know, the very, very poor World Cup qualifying campaign. But it was also long enough that it wasn't maybe just a, a one or two game blip or, a, you know, getting knocked out. Like they were poor over 14, uh, 14 games. So, um, you know, I think Haiti have been a bit of a rising team in this nation. They didn't get to the octagon, but they were a bit unlucky to meet Canada in the qualifying match there. Um, you know, would they have performed much worse than Honduras? Probably not. Um, so, no, I, I give Haiti a, certainly a, a better chance against Honduras um, than the odd makers, uh, you know, seem to suggest. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Uh, I, I would call it uh, uh, basically even. I mean, we saw Haiti did reach the uh, semi-final of, of the Cup. Uh, they, they're the pot two team here for a reason. They've been fairly consistent and, as you said, kind of uh, unlucky in some of their groupings. So uh, I'm looking for Haiti to upset these odds. Yeah, I mean, Honduras will, you know, they've been a strong team in the region for a while. They're going to try and put that, put things right, of course. Um, but yeah, Haiti's tough competition to come up against for sure. So it's not going to be a walk in the park for Honduras. Yeah. For sure. Okay, well, maybe we should go back to the uh, um, beginning a little bit here because I want to ask you about Mexico. And uh, uh, do you think they, uh, first of all, do you think they're going to bring their A-team uh, to the Cup? They just played the World Cup in November, uh, in, in yeah, November, December. Um, I'm not sure if they will, but I think they should. Um, you know, they lost the most recent uh, final to Mexico. Their World Cup performance, you know, Hang on, they lost uh, the final. Mexico lost the final to who? Uh, the USA. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So I had it in my head that uh, Mexico won that, but they didn't. Yeah, and then their World Cup performance, you know, wasn't as good as they would have hoped, um, not getting past the group stage. So I think Mexico have um, kind of by their standards a bit of a reputation to rebuild a little bit to be seen as kind of the top team in the region. I think they've got competition, not only in this group, but, you know, arguably from Canada as well, um, who taught, who got the better of them in the uh, World Cup qualifying. So I think, yeah, I think Mexico kind of needs to reassert themselves in the region a little bit. Yeah, uh, I, I maybe agree with you there. Um, I, and I do actually feel that uh, in terms of strength, well, we looked at it in the, in the player section, uh, that Mexico don't have quite the star power that they uh, that they've had in the past, and and I wouldn't put that down as the reason they didn't pass the group stage in the in the World Cup. But um, I, I do feel like they they are at a bit of a low in terms of their player quality. Yeah, and I think in this group, um, it's a competitive group. Um, and I don't see it being a stroll in the park for them. I mean, they showed that they dropped the, dropped points in their, uh, um, you know, World Cup qualifying campaign. Um, so I, I, you know, they perhaps are used to winning their groups comfortably and then kind of thinking more about the later stages of the tournament. But um, I think all three teams are going to give them a bit of a challenge. Yeah, uh, I got to say, uh, well, I talked about uh, quality, but in terms of quantity, I mean, they have so many players that... Um, I, I, I kind of do think they might bring a B team. And personally, as a Canadian, I would be happy if they did because uh, I'm pretty sure America is going to bring a B team uh, as well. And it could be a, a great opportunity for Canada. We're getting a bit off topic here. But uh, do you want to talk to that? Yeah. Um, like I said, I think Mexico's, um, you know, should be winning the gold you know, their aim is to win the Gold Cup kind of with whatever team they bring. But, you know, they haven't won it last year. Results haven't been good, you know, and I think their their fans expect them to be winning or getting to the final at least. So I think they should not take this this group or this tournament that lightly. Uh, that's a really good point. Their fans are very demanding. And, and I think you kind of uh, outlined that they wouldn't be satisfied with the, the past little while. So, yeah, I think... Uh, after hearing you talk, I think uh, Mexico has maybe more impetus for bringing an A-team um, than, say, the USA will. 
Uh, but uh, even even uh, the B teams, I mean, USA won the 2021 Gold Cup with a B team, not convincingly, but uh, uh, they, they, you know, uh, wouldn't be underrated even if they did bring a B team. Yeah. Uh, let's say they did. Would you see uh, uh, Haiti, Honduras, or Qatar capable of taking first place from them? Um, I don't really see them capable of taking first place. I see them taking points, but I also see those three teams taking points off each other. Um, it's, it would take a really strong and consistent campaign, I think, for someone to knock Mexico off the top. Um, but possible, for sure. I wouldn't rule it out. Yeah. Uh, I think you covered Haiti quite well uh, earlier on. So I want to move on to Honduras. And uh, do you think uh, you said uh, also that they were recently kind of a, a, a strong second to your team? They reached the World Cup uh, a couple of times. Uh, do you see them kind of uh, coming around, coming back to form a bit here? You know, I don't. And, and we talked about, yeah, Mexico maybe trying to reassert themselves. I, I mean, I think my main thing for that is Honduras. You know, they had 14 games in World Cup qualifying. Like, that's half a season, really. Um, and they never found form. They didn't get a single win. So um, I don't think there's any kind of bright spots to take away from that World Cup campaign. You know, when they were out of it, you know, you think, is this a chance to try players? Is this a chance to kind of freshen things up? But whatever they tried, it didn't work. So I am a little worried for them. I don't see the signs that, um, you know, they're kind of going to, jump right back to being like the, the the second place team that they have been over recent years yeah i mean and we did a series of podcasts uh, uh both at the beginning and midway through that world cup qualifying round and uh, i think we were we were kind of skeptical from the beginning that they weren't refreshing their team kind of relying on uh older players and i'm not i'm not sure they've done that much to address that yeah yeah i mean maybe this Gold Cup for them is a bit of rebuilding, but it's it's a difficult group to do that in. And again, I think they have demanding fans too, and I think a a group stage actually would not would not go down particularly well. Yeah, uh, well, uh, you got to consider Qatar a bit of a dark horse. Uh, we do have a bit uh, a bit more than last time to compare them with them, um, having been through uh, one cup in the Concacaf region. Uh, what do you make of Qatar here? I, I think they're going to be strong. I, I do agree that they, um, you know, might have peaked a little bit early, but, you know, before the World Cup, and that was, you know, even looking at the 2021 Gold Cup, but they lost to the United States one nothing on an 86-minute goal in the semifinal. You know, they were very close to getting past the States who ended up winning the tournament, and they would have given a good go to Mexico in the final. So, you know, they were a semifinal team last year it's possible they could go that far again. I think the big question for me is Qatar were building towards a World Cup for so long. Now that that's over, now what? You know, they have a new coach. Are players going to be motivated? Are they going to let go of some players that were really part of the World Cup project? You know, what's their motivation level going to be? That's the question mark I have. But in terms of quality, I don't think they showed their very best at the World Cup, at least in terms of results. And I think... Um, Again, another team with a bit of kind of reputation to restore. Yeah, uh, a lot of to a lot to unpack there. I will say, uh, uh, you mentioned kind of getting rid of players. I mean, that makes them a really dark horse here because we saw in the player section that uh, some of their veterans haven't uh, haven't come back, but they only played in the in the uh, Gulf Cup there, and then one friendly besides. So it's a, a bit a bit up in the air as to who who is on the team uh, and who isn't. And uh, yeah, you've said a bit of an underperformance in the cup, but honestly, anyone who saw the Asian Cup in 2019 would know that that was uh, a far less, uh, a poor performance compared to what they're capable of. And I'm really sad that we didn't see that in the World Cup. I would really be delighted to see them at their best here. I think you got a glimpse of that in the last Gold Cup, do you feel? I do. I mean, they, they won the group in the group stage. Um, you know, they beat El Salvador in an exciting game in the quarterfinals and then narrowly lost to the United States. So it was a really good tournament. And I think I think Qatar matches up well with some of the second-tier teams in, in North America. 
Um, you know, Haiti's kind of a new addition to that group. Honduras have recently fell out of that group, uh, you know, I would argue. So I think it's really interesting to see how Qatar matches up um, against the other teams. Yeah. Well, Toner, uh, I, I've just sat here watching you dance around the question, but I, I, I need you to uh, lay it out for our audience here. How is this group going to finish? Oh, it's it's so close. I don't even know what I'm going to say next. Um, <laughs> I think Mexico will win it. I'm going to say Qatar rediscover some form and finish second. I'm going to say Haiti finish third, but they could be a bit inconsistent. And I'm going to predict Honduras fourth. I'm going to say that their poor form carries over. Wow, you really stole my thunder there because that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, of those four that you picked, though, which do you see as the most uh, uh, possible for, for a switch? Um, I'm going to say, I don't know. I'm going to say Haiti and Qatar. I think that is the, the closest battle out of the bottom three. Oh, for second, you mean? For second place, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I, I disagree with you a bit there. I would say Haiti and uh, Honduras. I don't think it would take that much for Honduras to come back to form. Or as you said, uh, Haiti can be a bit inconsistent themselves. So... Uh, I would have chosen uh, uh, Haiti and Honduras, but it looks like we see uh, pretty eye to eye on this group. Yeah, I'm, I, I think for Haiti, I maybe I'm hoping a little bit for some of their their past Gold Cup form to to come out. Um, you know, I acknowledge that um, they didn't have a good tournament in 2021, but they had a very good tournament in 2019. So, um, yeah, maybe maybe Haiti. Yeah, you know, not a favor to go through, but um, I'm kind of rooting for them to do well. Me too. I mean, sometimes they start a little hot. They're a very exciting team to watch. Uh, uh, they start a little hot, and I think a mature team like Honduras can, you know, maybe wait them out until the 65th or 70th minute and then take advantage of it. But I think they have learned over the last couple of tournaments to uh, pace themselves a little better. Yeah, you may have convinced me of your position. Um, but Honduras, for me, I just haven't seen the signs of them coming back to life. So, um, but yeah. we'll see that, you know, if they return to the mean, you know, um, then yeah, Honduras could, could finish second too. It's, it's so close. It's really hard to call. Yeah. Well, uh, you have convinced me of your position that this is the, by far the most grueling group of the cup. And uh, it'll be interesting to see who comes through. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, good talking to you about this, Connor, and uh, I will see you back then for uh, Group C. All right, see you then. Bye-bye. All right, please check the show notes for a link to a short video about our past, present, and future media casts, and uh, all other links to navigate you through our system, including a link to our YouTube channel where each series is separated into its own playlist.